Hey guys, got milk? So it doesn't necessarily have to come from your backyard. Uh, this is goat milk from my girl Tootsie. But you can make cheese easily from grocery store milk as well. So if I were doing it and I were purchasing milk, I would go with a whole fat milk. Don't use anything that's low fat, 2%. You want all of that healthy fat, healthy protein, all that goodness, because that's gonna what is gonna be what makes your cheese really nice and thick curded. So this, like I said, is goat milk. I have, so to kind of catch you up as to what I've already done, all I've done is put milk into a pot. And it's been warming up for probably about half an hour. I'll show you what tools I have on hand for cheese making for this particular cheese. So I've made this particular video before and the quality was terrible or at least I assume the quality was terrible because I actually never go back and watch my own videos. But it was live and I had all sorts of uh, dropped and interrupted connections. So I wanted to go ahead and remake this video since I'm making the cheese. And I've told you guys that I'm just going to kind of bring you along on whatever it is I'm doing. I'm not going to create stuff for you as far as like uh, going out of my way and making projects because life is busy enough. So as I'm doing it, I'll just invite you along. So tonight I'm making cheese, mostly because I haven't made any in a while and we miss it. So what I've got is obviously milk. This is known as farmer's cheese. It's also known as acid cheese. It's also known as ricotta, although not the same traditional ricotta you would buy at the grocery store for making things like lasagna. Although I do use this in place of ricotta that you would uh, buy. Uh, it typically tends to be a little drier cheese. So what I'm going to do, if I am going to use it in an Italian recipe, is I would just add more milk to it to make it a, a softer, liquidier cheese. So this is definitely a cheese that has lots of room for variation. You can flavor it many different ways, and I'll show you as I get my cheese put together some of the different options that I use. So this is about as simple as you get as far as cheese making. It's a soft cheese. It doesn't require to be weighted down. It doesn't require any special equipment. So I have a pot. I have some sort of way to gauge temperature. I do use one of those like infrared guns for my soap making, but I don't think it's quite as accurate as an actual cooking thermometer. So I would definitely recommend in this situation to go with a specific thermometer for cooking. This is just a couple of bucks at your big box store. So what you want to do is you want to heat your milk up to somewhere between 195 degrees and 205 degrees. I found I like mine a little closer to 205. If I don't heat it up quite as warm, I don't get quite as good a curd and my separation doesn't happen as quickly. So partly because I'm impatient, but partly just because as I've done this through the years, I've found that I prefer it a little closer to 205 than I do 195. So. Let's check our temperature real quick. I should be really close. I'm at 197 right now. So I'll show you the other equipment that I have. This thing is specifically for cheese making. And I don't typically invest in a lot of tools that I can't use for more than one purpose. And I have found other uses for this for sure. But cheese making is by far my most used um, I don't know, application, I guess, for this spoon, but it has come in extremely valuable because as I'm making this cheese, and so like I said, it's known as an acid cheese, I'm using apple cider vinegar. You can use lemon juice, you can use white vinegar, it doesn't really matter, but what's going to cause the separation of the curds and whey is the acid itself. So it's going to separate all the fats and the solids in the milk from the liquids, and so that's what's going to be your cheese, is the fats and the solids. And then the liquid left behind is known as whey. It uh, uh, looks almost like lemon juice. It's real yellow. And so you wait until you hit your desired temperature. But what I do is I pour it over the top of this spoon. And so this spoon, because of all the little holes, it makes sure that it gets good even coverage over the milk without dumping in one specific spot. So you're going to need salt for this, partly because it pulls some of the moisture out and partly because it flavors. Uh, life is better with salt. Use a non-iodized salt. I'm in this one using picking and, pickling and canning salt. That's like a tongue twister. 
So you can use uh, really anything that's not iodized. Uh, pink Himalayan sea salt would be good. I have that on hand as well. So just chose the pickling and canning salt for tonight for no particular reason. And then you're going to want some baking soda. So I have about, I'd say about a tablespoon and a half of the salt. And I've got about, I'd say a teaspoon and a half of the baking soda. I don't typically measure a lot of things. What the baking soda does is because this is an acid uh, reaction here, is it's going to neutralize that. I've done it with and without. Uh, you get a little bit more bitter of a flavor in your uh, end product cheese if you don't do it. I equally like it with and without. So the, the re uh, recipe that I use, and in fact, I do have my recipe listed in our Etsy storage or Pet Heaven at Etsy if you guys are interested in supporting our candles at all. But so this is to neutralize the reaction. And then you want to melt some butter. I've got that melted over here. And that's going to add additional fat, but mostly lots of flavor. Uh, you can't go wrong with butter. Butter's delicious. So we're going to stir this real quick. And like I said earlier, you're going to somewhere between 195 and 205. You don't want it to boil. You do want to stir it occasionally so that you prevent scalding on the bottom. So you just want a nice, even, slow heat. Okay. And so what I've done, I don't have uh, any cheese molds per se. We're at 200 even right now, so we're right there. So, but what I do use for molds is uh, these old butter bowls. I haven't actually bought tub butter in years, but I save these, and they're kind of like my ghetto Tupperware. So, um, but I line them with plastic wrap, and that way, what I'll do is I pack my cheese curds in once we get the cheese curds, and then I, I have the plastic wrap to be able to wrap it. I put them in either in the fridge or the freezer. They are good in the freezer for quite a while. I I don't know that I have necessarily a best buy date on them, but we've used them months out and they've been delicious. So, but this is an easy way that I found to make my cheeses and then store them. And so once I get going, things are going to move kind of fast. What I've got. A lot of recipes call for running your cheese curds through cheese cloth, and that's definitely an option. I did it that way for many years. I also bought that butter muslin, which is a finer texture so that you lose less of the curd, but I found that this is just equally as uh, useful. I don't lose a whole lot of curd through here, possibly some. I wouldn't say that it's exponentially more than I would lose through cheese cloth. And this uh, I feel good about because I can reuse it over and over. Uh, technically, butter muslin, there is one type that you can buy that is reusable. You just run it through the washer. I feel kind of gross about that at some point just because I'm kind of a neat freak. So I like the stainless steel, and I like the idea that it's reusable. That really just it speaks to me. So what I've got here is a pot and then my strainer. And so as soon as this hits temperature, what the process is going to be is pouring the acid over it. It's going to take a couple minutes to separate, so I'll just slightly, gently stir it. When my curds do separate, I will spoon them into this colander here, let the whey uh, drip through. We'll add some of the salt to it to help pull the whey through and to give it some flavor. And then I pack it into my tubs over here. So I wish that I edited so that you guys didn't have to stand here and watch me, but I don't do that. So we are right now at the point where it is wanting to boil. I don't want it to boil, so I turn my heat off. I'm going to pour my acid. So like I said, you could use white vinegar. You could use lemon juice. Uh, you can use, I used apple cider vinegar tonight. I've used lemon juice, I've used white vinegar. It just changes the flavor just slightly, so it kind of depends on what your preference is. So, and I would highly recommend play with it, because that's the whole point of making your own food, is taking control, being able to dictate uh, not only what you use in it, but how it's going to turn out. And so, experiment. 
So don't just follow along here and think that you are constrained by just this. As, um, once you start playing around, I encourage you to play around in all sorts of regards. So not only with your type of acid, but your type of spices. Uh, so try it with and without baking soda. Try it with and without butter. See what uh, really appeals to you because you may find something that just is your absolute favorite that may never occur to me. So I've done things in my cheese. And here, let me see. Can you guys see that? That is terrible. But you can see it's starting to separate into this yellow liquid and then my solids. So curds are the solid, whey is the liquid. So okay. now we're back. Okay. So as you're taking control, I I, I mean there is so many different options. So like I was going to say is I have taken rosemary from my front yard and sautéed it in butter. I sautéed jalapenos and added it in here. We, I have garlic powder that I love to add to all of my cheeses. Dill is a favorite. So can you guys see this? Those are my curds. So Italian herbs are just fantastic, especially if you're going to use it in something like lasagna. So you've just got all sorts of options. So I'm not going to keep you guys here and have you watch this entire process. So essentially this is it. You just let your curds dry for a little while. So you can see that whey is wanting to pull through. Collect your whey. You can use whey for all sorts of different things. Uh, it is, makes a fantastic soup base. It has all sorts of minerals and vitamins and nutrients in it left over from your milk especially if you're using some sort of raw milk source. Um, and if you guys have goats in your backyard and you're milking or you have cows in your backyard and you're milking, you know that this is a lot of time invested. There's a lot of resources. So don't just pour your way down the drain. Save it. As I use, um, back when I was making bread a lot, I would incorporate the whey as my liquid in my bread rather than using water. I would use my whey. Uh, make, did I say fantastic soup base? I think I already said that. If you have an abundance, you can use it for uh, fertilizer in the garden. If you dilute it, it's going to go a long way, but that's going to also add some calcium. So for plants that are calcium heavy feeders, like tomatoes, uh, if you were to fertilize with whey, uh, your plants would benefit, especially if you're adding it to your garden in the off season and just continually adding your nutrients into your soil, uh, your garden will thank you for it. Livestock appreciates this. I will give it to my chickens and my ducks. You want to definitely let it cool because at this point it's hot. So don't, don't walk outside your front door and pour it on the plants because it will scald your plants. Uh, you want to let it cool. But it's also, uh, because there is acid in it, you could use it also as a hair rinse. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but there's just all sorts of various uses for whey. So it, it's a resource, it's not a, a byproduct that you want to waste. So let's see here. When I started, I don't think I told you how much milk I used. And to be honest, I didn't even measure it. I just started pouring my jars of goat milk. I think I had about a gallon and a half. Yeah, because that was two days worth. So it was a gallon and a half. So, and you can see, this is a fairly big colander. It makes a decent amount of cheese. So if you're buying milk at the grocery store, I have no idea how much you pay for uh, if you're able to get raw milk in your community, I know that raw milk in my community, although it was a blessing to our community, our local dairy recently closed down, which I'm super sad about. I know it was not inexpensive, but worth every penny. But uh, if you're comparing like store-bought cheese to making your own cheese as far as a dollars and cents decision, it definitely makes sense to make your own because you are going to get a lot of bang for your buck. So, 
So, and you cannot beat the quality. The flavor of homemade cheese, if you guys have never had homemade cheese before, you are missing out. So again, this is so easy peasy. I wish you could see. Um, you can see there's not a whole lot of whey draining from it. I'm going to go ahead and add my salt to it now. I'm going to go ahead and add my, oops, my baking soda to it now. Because right now it's going to be at its softest while it's warm and while it's still full, full of whey. Uh, the more you let it drain, the harder and drier it will be. And this cheese is so forgiving and so manipulable. Uh, you can really make it into whatever it is you want. So if you want it to be really runny like ricotta, don't let it drain a whole lot. If you like a drier cheese, put some pressure on it and push that way through and, and make a drier cheese. So let's see. Right now it's pretty fluffy and creamy. You can see as I stir it, more whey comes through. So uh, that is an advantage of using cheesecloth over this, is cheesecloth you can like really squeeze down on it. So if you really, really want a dry cheese, a, a cheesecloth would probably be better and that way you can really control your moisture content. So I kind of like somewhere in between a uh, ricotta and if I could describe it, this is more like a queso fresco, more like a feta cheese type consistency. So it's definitely got a little bit of fluff to it and some air to it. But when I put it into my containers, I really pack it down. So let's see here. Before I am done with this, I am going to dump my entire pot of whey through this colander. But what I'm going to do is I am going to pack some of my cheese butter containers first to make room because my colander is really full right now. So I want to make sure that I leave some butter for whatever cheese I do capture from that pot. ridiculously easy. It's taken me, what, 17 minutes plus about the half hour or so to warm up the milk, which was by far the most time invested in this. And it literally involved me walking by every couple minutes, stirring, stirring it just to make sure that the bottom doesn't scald, to make sure that it evenly heats throughout. Uh, you're free to do as you choose once you make the cheese itself. You can leave it plain. In fact, I think tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together one tub of plain one tub of cracked pepper, one tub of garlic, and one tub of dill. If I end up with any extra, I'm going to put together a tub of Italian herb. I think I'm only going to have enough room for, or enough cheese curds for four, though. But then, like I said, I either pop them into the refrigerator. Um, sometimes we'll stand here and eat it right out of the colander because it is that delicious. But uh, like I said, you put it into the fridge, it's ready to go instantly or you can let it cool uh, or I will put it into the freezer and we will pop them out. They look like little hockey pucks uh, and I just let them thaw for a day or two in the refrigerator and they're good to go. And I've had them months and months old and they have been delicious every single time. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. So you can use grocery store milk. If you have a source for raw milk, that's definitely my preference. If you have a goat or a cow in your backyard, even better. So, because you know that I am a homesteader at heart and my goal is to source as much of our food from our backyard as possible, but I do know that that's not realistic and I want to teach you guys skills that you, even if you're just dreaming of a homestead, you can practice these skills at home regardless of whether you have a source from your backyard or not. So go out, grab some milk from the grocery store, make a friend with a goat, make some cheese. This is crazy easy. It is literally... 10-15 minutes worth of effort and I'm going to have cheese for weeks. So you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. It is easy peasy. Hope this was helpful to you. If you would like to support our homestead in any way, shape, or form, I do have a series of affiliate links. There is a link to our Etsy store where we do have uh, not only this cheese recipe but all sorts of cool tools. 
And then there is a Amazon link if you guys just click on that and use that as your shopping portal. Amazon appreciates us funneling, um, like you guys wouldn't shop through Amazon anyway, but they appreciate the funnel and uh, so they just throw a couple percent our way for whatever it is you buy. So we do appreciate any and all support. I thank you guys for joining me. Do check out my other series of videos in the list and I shall talk to you soon. Well, uh, all right. That's all I got. Bye guys.